Well, good afternoon, everyone. So good to have you here. Um, it is starting to get nice out, uh, which is, I think, going to help a lot of us as we move through our day. Um, and the coming days, I think warmer weather will give us the ability to get outside a little bit and to uh, just uh, take in some fresh air and all that we have going on around us. So welcome to you this afternoon. Um, just a couple quick uh, housekeeping things. First of all, uh, I invite you to join us on Sunday. We're going to be out at Ottawa this week. Uh, and so come uh, see what that uh, the worship is going to be the same, but uh, be nice to come from uh, Ottawa Church and uh, have those folks out there uh, participate with us. Um, as we look to the future, just a reminder that we are in the virtual realm of things until the uh, 10th of May, and then we will uh, kind of see where that takes us. The church council, uh, we're going to have a joint council meeting coming up uh, on the 5th of May, and uh, we'll look at uh, where we're at and what we have going on. So those are just a couple housekeeping things as people start uh, to come online, and um, I always welcome any comments that you uh, might have um, in regards to this. I am thinking about um, how we might be able to to do something a little different once we're back worshiping together, if that becomes the case. Um, and uh, so stay tuned for some of my thoughts uh, and ideas as we move into that. So today, I was kind of just, um, I've been in the office working on newsletters and bulletins and this week's service. But I was also thinking about today and what we should talk about and um, came to me out of uh, Philippians. Uh, there are so many, so many pro uh, verses on God's promise, his promise to us um, and how he um, is always there for us. And I, I came across this. I actually... I just kind of opened it up and thought to myself, well, what are some verses that I've highlighted over the years that I thought meant something to me? And this, this is what uh, came out of Philippians when I went there. Chapter 4 says, Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by power and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. I think another way of saying this would be, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and be sure to thank God for all of his good gifts. We are in days filled with anxiety, filled with just not knowing what's happening. And I think a lot of people could will wind up saying that we are living in kind of this age of anxiety now. Um, it's pretty natural, especially when we're faced with um, faced with uncertainty. But we need to know that God never promised to remove all of our troubles or to take away all of our problems or to just have our difficulties disappear. But what God did say was that he is going to be there with us. And he has assured us that he will be there in the midst of our trouble. That he will be there in the midst of that conflict and in the midst of that anxiety. And that you know what he gives us? He gives us an everlasting peace. I was trying to see if I had something else here. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. 
So do not worry about anything. Do not worry. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. And so that's what he gives us. He gives us this, this genuine peace, a, a sense of assurance and of security. And that's what we need as we go through these days where we are going from true isolation to thinking of how we're going to be out and together again and how we're going to be a part of each other's lives once again. And so I think it is so fitting that we have these words. And I'll, I'll read the whole context to you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the biggest peace right there, is the peace of God. So no matter what you have going on in your life, if it's centered around what's happening in our country, in our state, in our area, or if you just have personal struggles in your life that have nothing to do with this virus, <clears throat> know that there is a peace that God will give you, a, a sense of assurance that he is always there and always present with you. He will take away the anxiety if you just re release to him what you have. Go to him in prayer. And even those times where the answer isn't what you want it to be, thank him for answering that prayer, for hearing you, and for holding you in his arms. So that's, that's my good good message for today. As I, I sat here and I felt a bit overwhelmed with everything that I had to fix and work on and get going and think ahead to the future. How do I put worship services together and, and so on and so forth. I found that I just needed to sit and listen to his peace and know that whatever I have going on, he is ever present. And so that's what I hope for you, that you will feel his presence that he will be ever present in your lives, no matter what you have going on. So as you go through your day, I invite you to read these short verses of Philippians chapter four, starting with the fourth verse and going through verse seven. Take time to read that. Take time to think back to the words of the 46th Psalm where it says, Be still and know that He is ever present. So, would you pray with me? Good and gracious God. We thank you. Even when your answer to our prayer isn't what we think it should be, may we continue to thank you for being ever present in our lives, for walking alongside of us, for giving us that peace that passes all understanding, for giving us a calmness in our lives. God, as we approach days of transition, 
May you continue to be with the leaders as they make decisions. That you be with us as we decide what is best for us as we are able to move about. God, continue to bless us in our worship together. May we know that where we are gathered, whether it be in our churches or in our homes or in our cars, our places of work, that we come together as one, that we come together as your beloved children. And God, in the midst of our anxiety and un our inability to know and understand some of what is happening, we ask that you be ever present on our minds and that you continue to lift up in your loving arms those that step out ahead of others and work in our hospitals, our manufacturing plants, on the ambulances and the fire trucks, our law enforcement officers, in our grocery stores, God, we continue to pray for our teachers as they are teaching in a way they never thought they would have to. And God, I pray for all those parents out there that are trying to be a voice for their kids, to help them, to teach them alongside our teachers. And for our students, especially our seniors who don't know what their senior year is going to end like, may they know that you are with them, that their classmates are with them, that their communities are surrounding them. God, some of these seniors came into this world in the midst of tragedy. And now they are surrounded with an unknown. So be with them. Be with our teachers of Christian education, whether it's confirmation or Sunday school or youth groups as they find ways to connect with each other. May their leaders find ways to connect with them. And God, I just lift up to you those that are healing, those that are hurting, those that are struggling. Come into their lives. Give them the peace they need. Heal them from their ill. And may we know that you sent your son to us to be raised from the grave, to live eternally with you so that we may have eternal life. And God, I know there are things on our hearts that we don't know what to say. So hear those things as well. And finally, God, I pray for our farmers as they can start their, start their journey into their planting and not knowing what this world is going to give them. They struggled at harvest time May you guide them and be with them and give them what they need 
so that they can give to us what we need for nourishment. Give us all patience in this, God, to hear you and to know that it will all be okay. All these things we lift up to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who rose from the grave and who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, I'm so glad that you were here. I'm so glad that you could check in with one another, that we could spend some time together once again today. So I invite you back here again tomorrow as we continue our daily check-ins. With that, I invite you to reach out to somebody and let them know that you're there for them. And as always, I'm here for you. So if you need me for anything, please reach out, connect with me. Thank you for all that you have done for your church. Thank you for all that you do for your communities. Stay safe. May God continue to bless you. May he wrap his arms around you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.